All right guys, so this is just gonna be kind of a montage video of a bunch of different mods I'm doing, but if you look up on the car, this side has a silver roof rack rail. And then if we walk around to the other side of the vehicle, this side has a black roof rail. And you're probably thinking, oh yeah, well you just go to the dealership and you buy a black roof rail. And yeah, it costs you about like 100 bucks a rail and then you're good to go. Nope, that's not what I did. I actually just vinyl wrapped it. I don't know why I was thinking about vinyl wrapping it. I just had some extra gloss black vinyl laying around my place. And so I was like, let's just see if we can vinyl wrap that. So it's like the only thing that's not blacked out on my Forerunner. So I was like, let's just see if we can vinyl wrap it. All right, so I'm gonna just talk a little bit about how we're gonna attach these cross rails to my roof rack. So it comes with the sweet instruction manual and basically we have to set up the screws appropriately so that they'll use these lock washers, how LFD has designed them. So you put the small jaggedy edges on the outside and then the like larger sections go towards each other on the inside. So if you can see, I've got four of them kind of set up to do that, so. I wanted to start out by just showing what the bolts look like and what these little T nuts are that slide into the aluminum channel. So they're narrow enough to slide into the track and then once you have them inside the track, they'll rotate. And this is a little bit challenging because there's space inside the track for them to just float around. So setting this up is not super easy. What I would recommend is screwing your nut into the bolt ever so slightly just so that you have something to try and maneuver the T-bolt some. I know some people have removed the roof rack entirely so that they can put on roof rails, but um, I think it was just as easy to put it up this way. I didn't want to go through the hassle of having to take down the roof rails to put on the crossbars. So as for the spacing of the crossbars, it's kind of up to personal preference. I decided to do about as far apart as I could. Uh, this was primarily motivated by the different mounting spots in my traction board that I could use. Uh, so if you've seen my traction board video, I put bolts through this smaller hole in the front of my traction board and then through a grip handle in the back of the traction board. And I didn't want there to be a lot of overhanging traction board on the front and back of the roof crossbars. So that's why I tried to space them out about as much as I could. I also figured that in the future, if I'm going to get some sort of rooftop tent, it's probably going to need to be more spaced out than not. However, anytime you really need to adjust these, you can just loosen those bolts and slide the cross rails. It's super easy and super straightforward. So another reason that I chose these cross rails was after watching a review by an, a fellow YouTuber named uh, TRD John, he mentioned that these were awesome because there was space under the cross rail to actually clean and move your hand and thread bolts and things of that sort. So I thought that was super great advice, which is one of the reasons I decided to go through with getting these cross rails. Um, another thing he also mentioned was that his road noise was pretty bad. I never experienced any bad road noise because immediately once I saw that, I also added this wind deflector to my order. So those are some of the things I kind of learned going along. Uh, as far as the assembly for this, it's really straightforward. It doesn't take any sort of special explanation. All right guys, so here's another small time mod that I just did that I think looks really good. Um, 
So I'm gonna walk you through how I did it on the other side of the car. So this is what we're looking at right now. So I've got a black 4Runner and typically the all blacked out look looks pretty sweet. So that's kind of the theme I've been running with with my car. And so when you look at that side rail, oh man, it looks so good. It looks so good. And that's because I just vinyl wrapped it. I was gonna plasti dip it, but vinyl wrap is so much better. So over here, now if you look, we've got a silver one up there. Whew, gotta get rid of that. So I, uh, I'm gonna hook you guys up to the tripod and let you watch as I work through this. So the first step though, when you're vinyl wrapping is you've gotta cut a piece of vinyl, obviously. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a pretty healthy piece probably like about six inches wide or so, cause someone's gonna tuck over and under it. Um, just as kind of a disclaimer, I'm not wrapping the whole entire rail. I'm just wrapping the part that you can see from the ground. It's just purely aesthetic. So um, I'm not gonna go too overkill with it. So let's cut that piece. So before you, before you wrap anything, you wanna wipe it down with isopropyl alcohol. And it's not too crazy. Literally just get a rag, get some ice rubble alcohol, wipe it down so that there's any like grime or grease isn't on the surface. Whether you preheat the vinyl is very specific to what you're wrapping. Since there's a slight curve in the roof rail, I decided to try and preheat the vinyl just ever so slightly to what a lot of, I guess, instructors in vinyl wrapping would say, you wanna pre-stretch the vinyl slightly. So I'm just giving it a little bit of tension here just so that there's a little bit of stretch so when you put it around the curve, it'll adhere to the curve a little bit better. Um, but I'm a rookie, so if you know of a better way to do this, then you probably have better technique than me. Um, but now, basically once I've got it on there, you want to smooth it onto the surfaces where you can. And then it's just a, a, a game of patience. You, you slowly work the sides over the curves and you try and get as much smooth up into the corners as you can. Um, cutting in the vinyl, I'm still not incredibly good at. Uh, but with the roof rails, it doesn't really have to be too specific. So. Uh, you just slowly work your way down. Uh, another thing I will mention is there is a protective layer on most vinyl. I definitely recommend leaving that on. Don't take that off once you've started putting it on there because that helps to prevent a lot of scratching, especially on gloss black vinyl like this. So those are some of my initial tips. If you made it this far in the video, I really appreciate you watching my channel and supporting my content. And I really hope that the content that I create is valuable to you in some way or at least entertaining. Um, but if you want to get additional content to YouTube and also maybe get some early insider knowledge on some of the content I will be posting, I really encourage you to follow me also on Instagram. Uh, the link to my Instagram profile is down in the uh, description below. Also, if you're not subscribed, I don't know what you're doing. Uh, you should totally subscribe to my channel. And if you like this video and you like my other videos, uh, drop a like and turn on notifications so that you're notified when I post new videos um, As well as comment down below if you've got any future video ideas for me that you'd really like to see um, I'm starting to plan some of my future content as well as thinking about uh, doing a little bit of merch So uh, if any of those things sound cool to you or maybe stickers or something else like that You think I should start making or have ideas for me uh, comment those below because I like to see what you all have for ideas and uh, what some future directions are that you would like to see. stock roof rack has silver roof rails but I vinyl wrapped those roof rails so it's really nice it makes the blacked out look continue even through the roof rack and then 
I bought the LFD roof cross rails or crossbars. I always get that mixed up. And they're super awesome because they allow you to mount basically anything you want to them. So if you've seen my video, I bought some carriage bolts. I've got these special turning nuts to kind of crank down my traction boards. So I mount that on that side. And then on this side, I have a Harbor Freight generic, uh, I think it's a 52 inch box. This is super handy because I just store a lot of random junk that I don't want in my trunk. So uh, it was like 120 bucks, I believe. Um, but it's great because lots of storage, so. And that mounted to this really well, so. So just to give a little bit better perspective, um, this is kind of the random stuff that I keep in here. I've got like a, a blanket, some sockets, paracord, this is a little portable air pump, some work gloves, some jumper cables, my trunk netting, some random bags, cloth, hammer, <laughs> bungee straps, tarp, all kinds of just random stuff that you don't want it laying around your trunk. So it's great to be able to just throw it up here. I also just wanted to briefly mention how I anchored this to the roof rack. So again, I got some carriage screws and I used this rubber washer so that I could try and keep it fairly waterproof and then a metal washer, a lock washer, and then a nylon nut and it's been holding fine so far. I don't have any problems. So I've got one screw here, one screw right here, and then two down towards the end in similar spots. So not too complicated to mount to the roof rack. And honestly, it's so easy to take off too if you need if you need the, the box taken off, but. Thanks for watching. I hope that this build was helpful for many of you that maybe don't want to spend like $1,000 on a special roof rack, but just want something to use your stock roof rack and you know maybe expand its capability a little bit. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.